Hello, my name is Helen Tuvey. I'm editor of Family Tree. I'm going to talk today to Penny Walters about her research into the black British slave trade, particularly the British involvement in it. And she's going to be giving a talk on this subject at the forthcoming Secret Lies conference. So this is quite a horrendous aspect of our shared history, our British history. So what particularly got you into this aspect of research? Well, I've obviously found out about slavery and slave history through books and at school, but I personally did a DNA test and I found unexpected heritage in my DNA test. And I've got six children um, who are mixed race and the eldest daughter then wanted to know about her ethnicity. So she's got a Jamaican grandfather. So basically we started getting interested in mixing the paper trail with the DNA test. And also the children were interested to know who had got the most Irish in them or who had got the most Jamaican in them. So when we did the DNA test, what happened was that these Jamaican heritage children came back as Ivory Coast, which really upset them because they knew they had a Jamaican grandfather and had done slavery at school, but hadn't ever felt that it had anything to do with them. They've got, you know, a happy and a successful Jamaican granddad. So the slave heritage was implied with the fact that they'd got Ivory Coast heritage in their DNA. It was Ghana and Cameroon. Congo, Mali, that kind of place. So it's so a it very, really... very personal take on yeah. history. Like you basically, you, you were doing your family history and then you ended up kind of diving into this huge, kind of stressful, epic period yes. of, of our history. And so you've taken a DNA test and are your children, are they all six of them taken a test? Well, the first one was overjoyed with her results. And then we started arguing about who were we going to support in football matches on um, yeah. for World Cup because there were some slight differences, but it was still all Ivory Coast. And then I've got a black British friend who is black but has green eyes, yeah. really pretty green eyes. So he said, oh... I understand that you could help perhaps with my family tree and I want to know why as a black person I've got green eyes, not brown eyes. So when he did his DNA test, again, it didn't come back as Jamaican. Again, it came back as Ivory Coast, but Mm. he was 12% European. So he then wanted to know that if you extrapolate from a 12% current ethnicity what might that imply yeah so those were the two things that were of interest really so as during the course of time then all six of them did dna tests and they all had slightly different ethnicities in there but it was a similar shape yeah Mm, mm. and so clearly the dna tests have been really helpful to you and they've just like basically launched your research. So what other sources did you find helpful? So like, you've got, the DNA gives you the basic detail, doesn't it, yeah. the ethnicity, but what helps you fill in the details of the story? Well, what's, I think, interesting with family history is that you have got ancestors, and if you are British and most of your ancestors are from Britain, you probably know where Devon is, you probably know where Birmingham is. But what I found when we were doing my research for my children, my granddaughter and my black British friend was that whilst I know where Jamaica is, I didn't know any of the parishes. Mm -hmm. So I was worrying that I was going to mix up different marriages because those people couldn't have travelled that far to meet each other. And I definitely didn't know many of the African countries. So suddenly maps were really useful. And I've used YouTube and TripAdvisor so that you can just get a picture of where these places are and it adds loads more to the context because if you give somebody their family history saying this ancestor was born in blah blah area it's a bit bland whereas if you've got maps you can see where they travelled from and especially with the Ivory Coast heritage I hadn't really been able to locate many of those countries before so maps and books were really useful there's also quite a lot of YouTubers that have done documentaries or videoed areas in Jamaica and in Ghana and in Nigeria so that you could actually again picture these things. Official records, I mostly used Family Search along with Ancestry, but Family Search has got Jamaican 
indexes, but has also, with some of the records, got actual photos. You know, oh, actually, yeah, the yeah, scanned, the, the scanned the photos. Yeah, yeah, which was so exciting. But obviously, with the slave records, you're having to take that information from other records quite often. So sometimes it was from records from ships or records from the goods that were being returned back to Britain. So they then there aren't really any physical censuses where you could find your ancestor's name so you're making assumptions yeah and some you know there's a bit of room for maneuver for things going wrong then because you're not actually finding people's names however if you've got black british friends who've got a very scottish name or a very british name you could then perhaps assume that the slave ancestor had been forced to take on the surname of the trader. So so Penny, um, clearly you've done a lot of research um, using maps, using YouTube, using the central family history records that we'd all use um, in our family history, like the um, parish registers, even mm. if it's for difficult countries that we're not used to using as a British family historian. So you've done the research. Now the next thing clearly is to make sure that we remember this aspect of your individual family history, yeah. but also us as a as a country, as individual communities, for instance, cities such as Bristol, which have such a strong like slaving um, heritage. So can you think of ways that you're going to do that in your family and what you could recommend to all the rest of us? I think that nationally there are things that you could do. So, for example, producing monuments, definitely making sure that the history is told, that books are published. And I think that children at school hear about certain things. So they hear about World War II. They hear about issues that have happened in the past, slave history. But actually, if you physically work your way back, it's not that many generations ago. It's only four or five generations ago. So my children's elderly Jamaican granddad, his grandparents or great-grandparents must have been the children or if not slaves themselves, yeah. because we're only really looking at 1865 at the latest. So it's definitely within so, a t- family history yeah. time frame. So this Jamaican grandfather, who is confused so I wouldn't ask him, actually it's probably his grandparents or yeah. great-grandparents that were children during that time. I think what is very upsetting for some black British people is that they find that there is a white or a slave trader in their history. Mm. So that can throw up some other connotations. But on a positive side, I went on a slave trail walk around Bristol recently, which was just fascinating. The chap that organised it took us around prestigious buildings, took us along the waterfront, and he explained some of the ethical dilemmas that have turned up as Mm. a result of slavery, in that some of the slave traders were really philanthropic. So when they yeah. they earned a lot of money from the slave trade, went to another country, purchased items and came back with a full ship of goods, sugar, rum. Actually, they were providing a lot of work in Bristol and they were also giving gifts of schools or being benefactors. So this is a huge ethical dilemma, which I hadn't considered. When I went on the slave trail tour, we just literally were walking around Bristol. So he was pointing out, oh, there was this famous trader and this is this nice house. Yeah. Uh, And actually he helped build a school or he was very generous with a church. A lot of the pubs and restaurants that were on the waterfront benefited from the sailors and the interaction of the purchasing and selling. So these kind of ethical dilemmas can be raised in an informative way because also in Bristol there are some there's a couple of streets. One is Black Boys Hill and one is White Ladies Road. Mm. So just even the names of these places are upsetting for some of the people that are living in that area. So I think what would be really useful is to have some commemorative monuments or a museum or something where children can have a heritage centre but to see things with an encouraging or a positive light at the end of that horrific tunnel. Mm. 
And also it's like with, with anything, the more you learn about history, the information does help to, because you're not speaking in generalizations yeah. then, as, as you say about the philanthrop philanthropic um, aspect, which is obviously you wouldn't want to major on that, but it's showing like the complexities of everything does help yeah. to make it more understandable. And I think some black British children might feel a bit intimidated in a, in a classroom lesson on slavery mm. because many children have had ancestors many generations in Britain and just feel British. They don't feel black necessarily. Mm. So if you've got a lesson on slavery, my children have come home and said, we did slavery today. And um, a couple of my friends said they felt, oh, they were really sorry afterwards. Mm. So again, if it's not in your history, you wouldn't know what response to give to that at school, you mm. see. Mm. And it must be very awkward for teachers as well. Mm. So um, there's definitely some positive things that people can do to remember these situations mm. and I think that with my children and my granddaughter having quite a few different ethnicities from the Ivory Coast was just absolutely fascinating mm. and has interested us in other things such as a salt route or a silk route or you know yeah. different products that have been sold around Ghana, Nigeria, the Ivory Coast so they've been researching that on their own accord now so it's given them a, a bigger interest in their ancestry with regards to those countries which probably they'll never visit you know. Mm, yeah well thank you very much it's very interesting That's okay. and um, I'd just like to ask one more question um, over the weekend of the Secret Lives conference is there anything in particular that you're really looking forward to? Well, I can see that there's a really prestigious list of guest speakers, so that's going to be nice. I can't wait to listen to other people's lectures. Hopefully people will be interested in mine as well and meeting colleagues because I think that a lot of the work for genealogists and family historians is that you are working online or you're working in archives, so it's a little bit solitary. Mm. So I think the camaraderie from the weekend will be nice. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Penny. All right, thank you.